If I wanted to set that up on my breadboard, first thing I would do is I'd take the plus five line from my Arduino and connect it to the positive side bus that runs all the way along the rail of the breadboard. And likewise, I'd take the zero volt line from the Arduino, the ground line, and connect it to the ground line all along the edge of the breadboard. I'd use a red wire for that and a black wire for that because it makes it easier to keep track of. Then I need to connect up each of the individual gauges to form my Wheatstone bridge. So remember I want to connect a bottom one, either one of the ones on the bottom that are going to get compressed and have their resistance go down, to plus five. And then I'll bring it back to one of the other pins on the breadboard so that I can connect it to some other elements. These are all connected across here in a line, so I can take the one of the gauges that's on top, plug one side of it in here, and the other side into ground. So if these are both about 120 ohms, then this voltage in the middle will be about two and a half volts. Likewise, if I go over here and take one of the gauges, the other gauge on top, connect it to five volts, and back down to this line here on the breadboard, then connect from that, so these are all connected together, up through the other gauge on the bottom and back to ground, this will be about two and a half volts. Now if I bend the beam so that the top is put in tension, that resistance goes up, and this resistance goes down, so this voltage over here goes down a little bit. And if I look over here, this resistance is going down, that resistance is going up, so this voltage is moving up a little bit from the two and a half volts that it is nominally. So the result is that I see a positive measured voltage on here if I put my multimeter across between those two lines. And the more I bend the beam, the bigger that voltage is going to be. For reasonable loads on the beam, we're not going to be stretching or compressing these gauges very much, less than 1%. So the voltage over here is going to change by less than 1%, and likewise here it'll change by less than 1%. So we're going to be talking about a very small voltage difference here between these two voltages that we'll need to amplify. We'll need to take that output voltage and have that be the positive and negative input voltages for an amplifier if we're going to get a reasonably sized signal out.